Mr. President, for the past two years, the Republican Party has enjoyed solid majorities in both the House and Senate. They control the schedule, and they control the process. They can decide which legislation to call for debate, and frankly, for all intents and purposes, they can actually decide whether anything gets done around here. A good example is the nomination of Merrick Garland to the Supreme Court. If he had been treated like all other Supreme Court nominees throughout the entire history of this country uh, in a presidential election year, he would have received a hearing and a vote. He almost certainly would have been easily confirmed, just as he was when he was nominated to the D.C. Court of Appeals. Instead, the Republican leadership did not even give Judge Garland a hearing, much less a vote. The Republican senators refused to do their job. And there are countless examples of this. It would behoove people in this country who complain about the do-nothing Congress to remind themselves that they are Congress controlled by the Republicans, both House and Senate. They can make it possible for work to get done if they want to, or they can make it impossible. And their track record for the past two years speaks for itself. Instead of a Congress that sets the standard for the world's democracies, we've been treated to a lesson of how not to get things done. Senator Lindsey Graham and I wrote the FY17 State and Foreign Operations Bill. As we always do, we wrote a balance bill and is reported unanimously by the Appropriations Committee by a vote of 30 to 0. Our staffs have been meeting for weeks with their House counterparts to hammer out a conference agreement. If the House and Senate can vote on, the President can sign. We could easily be finished by December 9 when the current funding resolution expires. So what's the problem? It's simple. Donald Trump was elected president, and now the Republican leadership has a different idea. Forget all those uplifting speeches about passing appropriations bills. Forget about so-called regular order. Forget about doing our jobs. What's the new plan? Throw 10 months of work in the trash can. Now we're going to punt the ball down the field for another four months, and after that, who knows? That's not doing your job. Maybe we'll do it again, end up with a continuing resolution for the rest of the year. There's no way to predict. For members of Congress who may not be familiar with the intricate operations of federal agencies and would prefer not to think about it, the idea of another four-month continuing resolution may not be a big deal. For those of us on both sides of the aisle who do know, it's an example of government at its worst. Funding the government by continuing resolution means putting priorities and budgeting decisions on autopilot. It stops us having any kind of a voice in what our government does. It negates the hard work that has gone into reevaluating priorities from one year to the next. It negates the careful process of looking at federal agencies account by account to make adjustments as warranted. It means largely making a carbon copy of an earlier appropriations bill or bills, regardless of changed circumstances or compelling need to modify earlier priorities. Continuing resolutions beyond a few months are illogical, they're wasteful, they're harmful. We end up spending less for things both Republicans and Democrats strongly support, and we waste money on things we don't need and nobody wants. It is bad government 101. It's just what the Republican leadership 10 months ago said they wanted to avoid, and we all agreed to them. But that was then. This is now. It's, whoops, forget what we said before. Uh, we've changed our mind. Let's waste the money. Let's go to the continuing resolutions. 